No, I'm back to lacking. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. This game is a disgrace to all of humanity. No one deserves to face this wrath. Why, hello, viewers, and welcome to Copyright Prone. The show that each day gets closer and closer to copyright infringement. <laughs> oh boy, blood and death are in the air. It's not the here game people dress as our worst nightmares try to rob us of our sweet, precious M&Ms. This year over Halloween, I decided to go as myself. One sexy chicken. So, while everyone else is taking part in all these shenanigans, it'd only be fitting if I take a look at the spookiest game I can find. Okay, now which game is the spookiest? Oh, uh, Luigi's Mansion. Uh, oh, wait. No way, that game has, like, ghosts in it, and that is way too violent for YouTube's new policies. Um, how about... Ooh, Super Mario Maker, that's actually really fun. Also, kind of scary, you know, it looks like some of those levels are pretty... Okay, well, there... Is that one game? Uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, Animal Crossing has like that pumpkin guy in it. Yeah, let's just do that one instead. Ah, oh, how can I forget? The game this is, is still my Wii U since I don't have a life. What? 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 Oh, God. Oh. Wait, what? How can this be? I locked it away, you don't have the key. Oh yeah, you're like the mental cat demon doll to watch you in a record. <laughs> Should have known. So, why does my Animal Crossing have satanic images in it? So, out of all the games in the world, this is the one you choose? You know what? No, I'm sick of this. I did like three videos in a live stream on this game. I am done. Uh, you know what? Let's play Pikmin and Set. People want a review on that game. And actually, it's one of my favorites in, in this video. Oh my god! You know what? I've been dying to play Wind Waker for a long time now. Like, actually, I just like a little, a little while. Oh, jeez! Okay, well, you know what? This is based off of a Wii disc, so the GameCube has, has a difference, so... Thank God for our Lord and Savior, Luigi's Mansion. Okay, how is that even possible? How can this be? Did you replace all my games with Purp House? Ha, well, um, joke's on you, because Purp House is a Wii game, so I can just play on any other console. Come on! Hello everyone, I'm Barshirkin, and I'm being forced to talk about Purr Pals against my will. Now, normally I talk about the background of, this, of the games I review, but the Wikipedia article of this is even smaller than I love this game, which is not very much. Purr Pals is a kitten simulation game developed by Brain Toys and published by Crave Entertainment for the Wii and DS in 2007. Huh, Crave Entertainment. Let's see how it worked out for them. Oh. 
please get a moment of silence for Crave Entertainment. The founder of the feast. Too bad your games suck. That's pretty much their version of Nintendogs, but with cats. So without further ado, let's dive in. The gameplay of this is pretty much what you'd expect from a pet simulation game. I've been very hard on this game, but you gotta understand, this, this and I go way back. Two years ago, I stumbled across it in a thrift shop, and the box is a little broken, but it seemed fine. Got it for two bucks, and I never gave the two bucks back. Now, I'm a pretty big cat fan, so I thought it would be perfect for me. I have three of them, but they're too fat to really do anything anymore, so I care about them when I can care about a virtual and energetic group of pixels. What could possibly go wrong? I was planning on covering this the same way I do every other game, but this is so different from anything else I played that I decided to do too much more casually. As I said, this game was made for the Wii and DS, so I'll be playing the Wii version. From the moment you open the game up, you know it's one of those Wii games. You know, the ones that just look and sound kinda awful. Plus, this title screen looks like it was ripped from out of a tech demo showing off the GameCube from like 2001, not the Wii in 2007. When you first start off your adventure, you're greeted by Victoria, your kitten mentor. She's the guide, and if you press the question mark icon, she'll give you some helpful hints. And to clarify, your face will be nothing like hers while playing. This is false advertising. Next, I have to choose the unlucky kitten that has to come along for the ride of mistreatment and torture. You can actually own the five, but they're pretty expensive, so I have to wait a while until you can afford it. So you can guess I only bothered to own one. There are 40 breeds to choose from, which I will say is pretty impressive. But also, seem to have their own traits like they do in real life and have their models. You only start off with a certain amount of money, so you can probably only start with the cheapest one first, and then you can just donate it when you have enough to afford the one you want. You can also name it, choose its gender, and fully customize whatever you want to look like. Like having these demon eyes. At least the game's self aware. After all that's over with, you're taken to the house, which is where the entire game takes place. You're tasked with one goal take care of your kitten in order to get money so you can buy supplies toys, and some sweet, sweet outfits. Up here to find the options tab. First, the giant Purr Pals logo brings you to the game select, taking you to Love, Feed, Groom, Play, Litter, Rooms, Games, Shop, Customize, and Show. The cat icon shows you your cat's needs, traits, your money, your unlockables, and your medals. Then there's the squirt gun, which does... something. I mostly just use it to abuse my cat, but according to the manual, it's also used for a way of displaying it. And yes, it can actually damage your furniture, so watch out for that. Finally, there's a clock, which shows you what time it is. I don't know or care how long each day is, but it seems like 25 minutes in our time. At the end of each day, you'll be, you'll be graded on how well your cat is doing, so you want it to have its bars low. The max amount of allowance is $5, but that'll get decreased if your cat isn't looking doing some hot. So will probably end up with, like, getting a buck, which is kind of pointless. I guess it's time to talk about what you actually do in this game, so let's go over the cat's needs. If you don't take care of them, be prepared for a lot of hissing and howling. And fleas. Lots and lots of fleas. First up is love. If your cat tries to include needing love, then this is how you spend 50% of your time playing, because you basically just move around and inappropriately touch your cat. Quality gameplay. You can also buy catnip, which folds the meter all the way down, but it's pretty expensive. It's really boring, but if you ever want to touch your cat's butt or punch its face, now you can. Next up is food, where you feed your cat. There are four kinds of food. Regular, shiny kitten, which probably improves the cleansiness. I didn't bother to buy them, so I'm just assuming. Cuddly, which might help love. And playful, which might help play. I'm also now just realizing that I'm giving one cat several entire bags of cat food in one day. Which in this game is anything accurate to real life that'll allow cat to get diabetes, just like Goon over here. Feeding isn't that hard, but I had a ton of problems figuring out the controls at first. So basically just had to start my cat to death. Next up is Groom, where you have to hold B over your cat to clean it. It isn't really that hard, um, that is, unless your cat gets fleas. Apparently, if you aren't a good owner, the game gives your cat's fleas every time the developer sneezed. I'm telling you, it's constant. Even after you buy flea spray, they come back a minute later. It's like a money drain. Anyway, finally we have Play. In the Wii version, there are actually eight different little games due to your cat, which is not to be confused with the mini games. However, only one of them is free to the star, that, that being the mouse. While holding B, you have to wind the pointer inside the circle to line the mouse up, and then the cat chases it. Yay! The laser pointer allows you to SHOOT YOUR CAT! Well, I wish. You have to change the shape the laser is in and have your cat chase it. Or at least, sometimes chase it. 
You, you can throw the bouncy ball around your room, and well, sometimes have your cat chase it. However, cats don't play fetch. Are cats really this boring to have them do dog stuff? Anyway, there's also yarn, but it's literally the exact same game. You can, you can turn your reader mode around, like control the fishing rod, and just like before, there's also string, which is the stray copy. The remote control mouse is kind of cool. You hold your, your reader mode sideways to steer it, and it's semi-fun. However, if you have $50 to spare, you can also buy the RC truck, which is just like the mouse, but you can also have your cat ride it. Or you can take your cat around the house. Although it costs a lot of money to buy the toys, they do bring up most of the enjoyment here, but sadly half of them are straight lazy copies. The final main form of care is litter. We had to scoop up your cat's poop in the litter box. And as a professional cat pooper scooper as myself, I can say that for the first time ever the Purp House version is surprisingly better than a real life one, but that'd do a pretty sucky job to make virtual poop worse in real life. Anyway, we have to scoop with A and slowly carry it to the bag. As I said, it's surprisingly, and sadly, one of the most enjoyable parts of the game, which isn't saying much. Just prepare to clean up a lot of poop. There are six rooms you can navigate around, that being the playroom, kitchen, bathroom, garage, garden, and living room. You can travel to whichever one you want on the fly, plus you get to watch your cat either fly away or get force choked. I can't tell. You can actually customize these rooms in the shop, if you want, but I don't know why you'd want to. It's kind of cool how basically the entirety of this game takes place in the house, even mini games. but just before, it's really not that exciting. After 10 minutes and you get completely bored out of your mind, there are 7 mini games, which are a slight distraction that'll keep you occupied for another 10 minutes. The most notable is the music one, which also has the most to it. Four cats, who can surprisingly sing, which is pretty annoying and creepy, sing a song while you have to either press or hold B when the music notes have to hit the box. The three difficulties, which the hard songs being surprisingly not too hard, and if you're okay, you get five bucks out of it, which is the best way of earning money. There's a lot of variety of songs, but I guess they couldn't afford anything that wasn't in the public domain, so everything's hundreds of years old. Next is Cupid, where two cats in love get frisky and their hearts rip you out of their bodies and float away while the Finest of Freddy's theme plays in the background. You have to aim at the hearts and shoot them at B. And that's it. It's okay, but there's really nothing to this game. Copycat is just how it sounds. A cat will be somewhere, you have to click on the place it's at, and then it continues by adding a new one each time. It gets pretty hard later on, and although also annoying, I can at least say it's an actual game compared to the other ones. Alley Oop is basketball, you gotta throw the ball in the hoop. Or at least that's what you're supposed to do. But the controls are absolutely unbearable. So I've made zero shots in my entire adventure through the Purp House journey. Ping Pong is, is a typical ping pong. Trying to get the highest volley streak you can with your kid. It's a little harder you used to, but it's alright. Mouse Hunt is a little obstacle course, you have to get, have to get your mouse to get as far as you can through a course in a limited amount of time. But if it moves when not being kind of safe spot, you'll get caught. The final one is putting, which is golf for dummies. Like Wii Sports Golf, you have to swing the rear mode just like a golf club, and I think that you're supposed to hit the ball and hope your cat doesn't block it from going in. However, I'm not so sure. As I said before, you can't take care of your cat without a whole lot of money, which is where the shop comes in. Here you can buy clothes and accessories for your cat. Toys, food, litter, catnip, police spray, and house key decor. Customization is where you can adjust your cat up, which is a pretty cool feature that can be a slight distraction from how terrible this game is. They surprisingly put a lot of effort in this, and I found my cat's sunglasses is hysterical. Finally, there is a cat show, which shows us your cat by how well you took care of it in a matter of either one, two, three, or five days, and because no one likes four. And yeah, that's basically everything here is per pals, but there are a few more things I want to talk about. The controls are alright, and that's all I'll say. It takes a while to get used to, but if you're bothered to stick around for a half hour, you should know what you're doing. Just like the controls, the graphics are... alright. They're not bad, but you thought the developers tried. And each cat has their own model and has semi-detailed fur and tails. However, the Wii wasn't really built for this realism, so everything kind of looks just blurry and kind of ugly at times. Like that freaking awful title screen. Speaking of awful, here comes the music! I can really only think of one or two tracks. I'm pretty sure that everything else is from the public domain and used in the music game. The title theme is stupid and simple, but it's a cat simulation game, not Mario or Zelda, so you really can't expect much out of them. 
And I think that's it. The main part of the game is completely silent besides her cat, though that might be a good thing. I guess it's time to share my thoughts, although I'm pretty sure you all know what I'm gonna say. This is not a very good game, and as I said, you'll have, you have seen it in its entirety and will be bored in a matter of 20 minutes. The developers really tried to one-up Dogs, and although I never played it, it seems like everyone agrees that it didn't have a fighting chance. Plus, I love cats, I have three of them, and you know what? They eat food, poop, maybe love you for like 5 minutes a day, and then go off and sleep. Maybe some others play, but mine are too fast to move. Even then, a purr pal is absolutely nothing like a real life cat. You can switch it out for a dog and it'll feel normal. Cats don't play fetch! The whole game is just really boring and thank god for minigame, but even then they really aren't that great. My cat kept on getting fleas and I had to waste all my money to treating it. Plus, its bars fill up way too fast, and by the time they treat four, they're back up again. It would be one thing if it was more interactive or your kitten was cuter, but I wouldn't mind dead throughout the entire playthrough. For a cheap third party Wii game about nothing more than cats, it's okay, but it doesn't mean it's good. Some games are so bad they're kind of fun to play just for experience, but this is not one of those games. So yeah, that was Purp House. Usually around this time, I'll go through each category and create a game on that, but since I've taken a much more casual route for this review, I'm just gonna give my overall score of 40%. I'm sure it's much higher of a score than they might expect I give it, but it's still flunked hard. Honestly, I wouldn't entirely put the blame on the developers. As I said, cats just aren't as active as dogs, so you can't really do much with them. Plus, the Wii's hardware at the time just wasn't powerful enough to run this. I feel like Nintendo could have tried to do something like this, but they probably would have faced the same problems, but the classic Nintendo is strong would could have saved it. However, I do have an objection. I said that this game was also released for the DS. Obviously, the graphics were severely worse, and several of the themes and features were removed or to change to work with the DS's touchscreen. For the first time ever, I can surprisingly say that I might think that the DS edition of a game is better, or at least it's worth your money. Let me explain. In the Wii version, all your social time with your cat is spent touching it with the pointer or your remote. Here, you can actually pet it with your finger or stylus, and the same goes for minigames. It makes it way more interactive and lets you feel like you actually have a virtual cat that you can love and take care of. It's still a terrible game, don't get me wrong, but it works more on the DS version. The target demographic was obviously kids, but I would say that the only age group that will find any enjoyment out of this would be like ages 4 through 7, and not for that long. If you really, really want a pet cat, but can't for whatever reason, and want one for the Wii or DS, I guess you could give this one a try, just know what you're getting yourself into. As I said, I own three cats in real life, and I would much rather take care of them than one singular pixelated piece of AI. So I think we should see how my kitten did during cat show. You had one job! You suck, I hate you! Felix, you're not my cat anymore! Well, I did it. I finally reviewed that my monstrosity. I can now live my life in peace. Hey, I did it, you incredibly dis disproportionate and mutated cat demon doll thing. Does this mean I'm free? What's that? You do realize you can just watch him on YouTube, right? Oh, well, you got a point there. You know what? I'll give you this spot right here. Now you get to be in every video. Now that isn't suspicious at all. Thank you all so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it. I know this one was a little bit different than before, where I took a more casual route in the review, but I really did enjoy making this one, so I hope you all enjoyed this. Maybe tell me in the comments in below which one you like more. So yeah, if you really want to watch you play Purr Pals, then I do have a little short series a while back, which... It's Purr Pals, it's not that great, but it's still something, so yeah, I gotta see you guys in my next review, or a new series, so, bye-bye! On today's episode of Copyright Prone, we take a look at a young lad named Jerry who meets Satan himself. Through a Wii game? Please. Take a look. Hi, my name is Jerry. 
Many years ago, when I was just a kid, I had a strange encounter with this Wii game. Now, I was a little different than all my friends. They loved spending their time outside and playing sports together, but I'd never really been in those things. I enjoyed spending my time inside reading or drawing. That is, until I came across a Nintendo Wii. The year was Christmas 2007. My parents knew how fascinated I was with the Wii's motion controls for a while now, and they were able to save $250 to buy them for Christmas. I was obsessed with games like Super Mario Galaxy and Wii Sports, and played them from the moment I got home from school to the moment I went to bed. Seriously, I played so much that some of my friends thought I was brainwashing me. Each month I would save up all of my allowance and walk to GameStop to buy another game. One time when I went to find The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, I came across this little game called Purpals. I never heard of this game before, so I looked at the back cover. I probably had to raise a kitten and play with it. Now, I love cats, and I've wanted one for years, but my dog is allergic to them. Back then, I had no idea what the difference between first and third party games were, so I just assumed that the quality of both games were the same. How little did I know? I knew I had to have it, so I ran up to the counter and handed the cashier the game and the money. He looked at me, then the game, and gave a little chuckle. I guess he didn't expect a kid like me buying a game that looked like it was meant for six year old girls. Can't say I blame him. After handing the money, I raced out of the shop and ran home. I charged through the front door, headed towards the Wii, and put the game in a disc slot. I was expecting a gift from God, but was instead given a pile of raccoon poop. I had to be missing something, so I spent the entire day searching, searching for something to go to her house. I couldn't find anything. I grew frustrated and annoyed by my cat, who wouldn't shut up and kept getting fleas. After a while, I just stopped caring for it, and even did what I could to hurt it, which ended up giving me the same amount of enjoyment. I went to bed in the night with mixed feelings. That game was terrible, but I spent a whole 20 bucks on it, and I didn't want that to go to waste. I found a piece of my purple entertaining, and it was all I wanted to do. I tossed and turned that night. I couldn't fall asleep. I checked my clock. I read 3 a.m. Suddenly, I heard constant meowing, which I immediately recognized. I opened my doors quietly and stepped out. Luckily, my parents were very deep sleepers, so they wouldn't hear me creep down the stairs and into the living room. Somehow, the TV was turned on, with a familiar screen. I guess my dog must have stepped on the remote or something. I figured I got the game was already on, so I could play for a few minutes. Upon entering, however, Felix was nowhere to be found. In his place was an old black cat with glowing red eyes named Red Rum. I never created this cat, and I was shocked to see him standing there. Where did he come from? I decided to carry on with the game, and to my surprise, it was her, see what I did there, effectively normal, besides Felix being missing. I kept on abusing this red room creature, and didn't bother feeding it. Normally, the cat would start to cry or occasionally hiss, but this one was constantly hissing, growling, or just howling. It was kind of creepy. After a while, I started to feel sleepy and decided to go back to bed, when heard a loud meow, as if a cat was in pain. This spooked me, and I peeked out my window to see what was up. I got close to my TV, however, and sure enough, something in the game was creating that noise. It sounded like it was coming from the in-game kitchen. I woke up to the door, but before I could enter, Red Room howled louder than I ever heard him before. He seemed to be getting more and more angry with each step I took. I wasn't, I wasn't sure what to do. I wasn't sure what to do. I couldn't investigate, but I was younger back then, and, thought, and the thought of an evil pigs like cat scared me. I was a bit nervous, but I really didn't care what he thought. I clicked on a button to travel there, but instead of teleporting, Red Room gave me the nastiest hell I'd ever heard and charged at me. The screen turned red for a second, and then the TV turned off. I sat there, staring at the screen for three minutes, trying not to scream. Then I ran upstairs and went to bed. A week later, I still hadn't played Purr Pal or even turned on my Wii console since that eventful night. I didn't know whether I should play it again or not, then that kind of scared me. I didn't want to have to witness that drama again, but maybe that was some form of glitch? I wasn't familiar with coding back then, so that seemed reasonable. After a long time thinking about this, I decided that I should play one more time to investigate. After a long day of school, I ran home and slowly turned on my Wii. To my surprise, it was perfectly normal. I don't know what I was expecting to see, but I guess it involved Red Rum or whatever his name was, waiting for me. I started to play Purr Pals, but everything was exactly the same as I left it. Or at least, the last normal day I left it. Felix was there unwell, well, and Red Rum was nowhere to be found. Then it hit me. I was probably dreaming. I hated this game so much it probably worked some of my work way in my dreams. I started laughing at myself for thinking that my, game, that my games was haunted when I saw that Felix wasn't looking too hot. He was a thin, bony mess, and looked like he was in pain. I was both startled and confused, but whatever happened had to be real. 
I played the game every day for next week, but besides Felix looking like his body was stepped on by an elephant, everything was normal. I decided to look online to see if anyone else had experienced this, but all I found was, untru was an untrustworthy article on a creative entertainment developer supposedly going crazy and hacking one of their games. Nothing related to this. I laid in bed each time thinking about what could have caused this. I tried to remember what time I turned the game on. 3 a.m., the devil's hour! How can I have seen it before? I knew what I had to do. I set my alarm clock to 2.55 that night, and when the alarm went off, I crept on the stairs, turned my Wii on, and plugged my headphones in the back of it. I started up her pals, and Hoobah Red Room was standing there. He glared at me with his glowing red eyes, and, and to my surprise, he made a noise which sounded like a creepy, corrupted man saying, Fool. He then started laughing evilly. I didn't like this cat. I should have turned the game off right then and there, but I was curious and wanted to play some more. I decided to play the game normally, but with Red Room. Once again, Felix is nowhere to be found, but this time I could even hear crying. Reverend did not seem to be happy with me, and glared at me whenever I bathed him, played with him, and everything else except feed him. Seems reasonable. I'll admit that I wasn't doing a very good job, and may or not have been taking some breaks to play the only semi-awful mini-games. I played for a longer than I expected and was shocked when I noticed the time. 3.59. Reverend looked at the servant and started crying. Not howling, crying like a normal cat. He started going crazy trying to get my attention. He then spoke in actual, semi corrupted words. Jerry, turn the game off now. Please. I was very confused by all of this. And he sounded like he was begging for mercy. I realized that I had the high ground in this situation, and I, I didn't do anything. At 4 o'clock, Redwin gave a blood curling howl, glared at me one last time, and died. After a minute, he disintegrated. I was shocked. I didn't know whether to be happy or nervous. Could he be revived and hold me forever? I tried to play for a couple more minutes and to celebrate Red Room's death. The game didn't know what to do because the player is supposed to have a cat at all times, but since Red Room was technically my cat, it started glitching out. Then it hit me. A week ago, Red Room didn't want me to open the kitchen door, but since he's dead, who's going to stop me? I entered the room tab and clicked it. I soon began to regret everything. I saw Felix laying there, half dead. He's barely breathing, and looked like a skeleton with only a little amount of meat left. How long has it been since he's eaten? He glanced over at me, gave the stu at stupid meow he used to scream at me, turned around and died. This shocked me. I immediately turned off my Wii and ran to bed. I tried to fall asleep, but I couldn't. My gruesome image was ingrained in my head. My parents and friends were all worried about me. I hardly ever talked to anyone anymore and spent my free time just reading. At least books that couldn't hurt me. Cats went from my favorite animal to my least, all because of Red Realm. Looking at my beloved Wii semi-graphic images, so I locked it away and began as my closet. My friends asked me why I didn't play my, my Wii anymore, but I just shrugged. Nobody would believe me if I told them. It wasn't until my best friend Daryl he asked that I gave in. I told him everything, even the gruesome parts. He seemed pretty spooked, but he said that all I do is in my Red Realm instead of sleeping, so it would probably give me weird dreams. The next day he ran up to me while I was walking to school. He told me that Red Realm was backwards for murder. When he realized how surprised I, I sounded, he, must, he knew that I must have been telling the truth. After school, I took her pals from my closet to show Daryl who was waiting for me outside. He said that we should try to return to the GameStop. As we entered, however, the, game, the same cashier for the last time noticed that I was holding the game. Any problems with it, Jerry? He said with a chuckle. I asked him if I, if I could return it, but he declined. This game is special, he said, smirking. I guess I had a hard time selling it and weren't going to give it back. Frustrated, Daryl and I went back to the house. He asked if I could play the game one last time, and I agreed. I figured that since he was there, I wouldn't be as scared as it was on the creepy nights. I booted the game up, but to our surprise, we didn't see Red Realm or Felix. Since there's no more cats in the game, it started glitching out. I gotta admit, it was actually kinda cool. I never experienced anything like it before. I, sh I shut down my Wii, turned it on again, and played Power Pals again, but it's still glitching out. While I was doing all this, Daryl was on his phone. He told me that I should just throw the game out because he there didn't seem a way to fix it. I thought he was right, but I didn't want to get rid of it yet. Instead, I hid it under my bed and enjoyed my Wii and other games that I had. After a while, I actually forgot that I had it at all. It had been months since I had play actually played it. Now it was June and school was ending soon. I thought I was going to have a carefree summer playing my Wii when one of my friends pointed out the next Friday was Friday the 13th. I didn't think, it didn't think much of it until I, I remember her pals. I realized that I hadn't checked to see if Red Room came back at 3am, so that's exactly what I did. I set my alarm clock at that time, and when I went... Went off, I grabbed my game from my, under my bed and ran downstairs. I booted the game up, but it was actually the same as last time, a glitch fest. Then it hit me. Maybe if I played at 3am on Friday the 13th, something would happen. 
I was probably overthinking it, but it was worth a shot. I did exactly what I did the other nights, but this time I'm not expecting anything. I plugged in my headphones and my Wii and turned it on. When I booted up the game, I was surprised to see that there was no music or lights. It was kinda creepy. I was happy to see that it was actually gonna let me in the game this time, but happiness didn't last long. There were no cats in the room and just me. There were no sound effects or anything. I gotta admit, it was even more creepy than any of the Red Room encounters. Then all of a sudden, a light shone from above. A few, a few seconds later, Red Room appeared, still dead. A minute later, his eyes opened, revealing his red glowing eyes. He stood up with a limp and said, So, you finally returned. Took you long enough. Were you too scared? This is the first time he had spoken more than a word, and I wasn't sure what to do. I decided to stay and listen, and if things got tense, then I could turn it off. You seem nervous, is that so? I guess it means I did my job. I hope you realize that I am not a bad guy here. You are. I'm not the one who mistreated, abused, and in the end killed Felix. A programmer designed this game so that every player's progress would be tracked. People who took care of their cat were spared. However, almost all players played once and never again, leaving their cats abandoned without an owner to starve. Some, like you, even did this on purpose, which is why it chose to appear towards you, no one else. As you can see, my name is Redroom, back with your murder. If I murder cats, well, my name would be Murder. It's my job to care for the unwanted, to protect those without a home. Sadly, you were so terrible towards Felix that he couldn't be saved. However, as you found out, I'm only active at 3 a.m., which both allows me to do my work without being noticed, and so that people could potentially make videos titled, You'll play Purpels at 3 a.m. I never expected you to play as, as long as you did, however. I mean, the clock struck four, I died. That is, until the most evil time of this year. Seems fitting, huh? I know you're disappointed by the quality of this game, but not all students have enough money to fund for a project like Intent Dogs. We just try to do our part. Hopefully you understand the importance of my role, and how important care towards these cats is. I personally hope that you spread my message onward, and leave no cap for value. Goodbye, young Jerry. I know you're going to get it hard. I noticed the clock read 3.59 a.m. I couldn't believe how fast the time seemed to pass. I saw Roman smile at me, and then the game just popped out. I set it back in, but all it did was display a message on my TV. You have passed the test. You are a dedicated Perp House player. Spread the word. I had the best sleep I had in a while that night, feeling good inside, like a wave lifting off my chest. The next day, I knew what I had to do. I went to Daryl's house, handed him the game. I think you should have this. Um, isn't this a haunted cat game you showed me a while ago? Oh, do you actually believe what I said? Like there would actually be a evil cat inside the desk. I made all that up, but it's still really fun, you should give it a try. He seemed pretty annoyed at me, but hesitantly accepted my offer. Now I remember, I said. Don't hit her pals at 3am. We both laughed, and as I walked away, all I could think about was how little he knew. Aw oh, man, classic Purr Pals. So with that, today, that concludes today's episode of Copyright Prunes. See you next week for some more quacky antics and shenanigans. Come on! <laughs> what the Shrek? I get to be in every video.